All right, what's going on, guys? Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets again. So, quick update on the uh, fight camp. I'm um, sitting here at the airport in San Francisco, waiting to head over to Seoul, South Korea. I'll be laying over there before I head over to uh, my next destination. I just got a text from Taylor letting me know that his coach fell through for the fight camp and I will be his corner. I'll be his coach. So that's where we are right now. I'm going to link up with Taylor on uh, the day before the fight camp starts and uh, make sure that he's got everything he needs and that he's doing what he needs to do. He said he's been doing a lot of shin conditioning, taking off the pads finally, the shin pads that is, and um, getting his shin used to actually getting kicked. <laughs> So I'm sure he's going to want me to kick the crap out of his shins. I know he's been doing a lot of uh, really good body conditioning as well. And he's been cutting a lot of weight. So I think he's uh, 192 right now. He's going to fight at 185. Uh, and um, that should be an easy, easy cut for him in the sauna. At that, at that, it's like nothing. That's honestly nothing. And me and him now are roughly the same weight. I walk around at about 190. So uh, we'll be doing some good training together as well it'll be good for him to uh, practice with a guy his own weight so that's it guys just waiting on the flight and uh, i'll update you once i get into asia So I laid over for 48 hours in Seoul, South Korea, saw the DMZ, always wanted to see it. It was pretty cool. And uh, then it was hopping on another flight to go meet Taylor and Viet freaking um, start the fight camp. fight camp so let's uh let's get into it let's do it strength and honor well, we got to the saigon sports club pretty famous place if you uh are a fighter in southeast asia and immediately started training we got a quick tour and then right into it so we did a bunch of grappling it was about an hour of grappling no, actually, two hours of grappling in the evening, and then there was a uh, hour or so MMA session in the morning. So the way it works was an uh, hour and a half, roughly, in the morning, and about two hours at night of grappling. So that's the way that it went. Admittedly, I got to admit to you, I got to be honest, I didn't go to one morning session. Once I got in country, I was so distracted with seeing the sights and going out with a lot of the girls i just i didn't ha i didn't even make it to any of the morning sessions but it was really great to be able to grapple at night when you're on vacation one thing that you really miss if you're a guy like me is training and you start to worry about getting out of shape and stuff so i didn't have to worry about that i was able to grapple every night with a lot of high level grapplers and fighters from all around the world it was really really cool experience uh, the grappling training itself uh, wasn't uh, wasn't anything that I'd say was really mind blowing or anything. But what was really special was being able to talk to a lot of these high level guys from all around the world. We got guys from Australia, Germany, the Netherlands, freaking Bosnia. We had we had guys from literally everywhere uh, who were fighters come around and to be able to talk to these guys, and pick their brains about things, and this and that was really really cool experience. So it was well worth it, in my opinion, um, when I wasn't anyway. I'll leave the details of my experience out because it's frankly not appropriate for YouTube. But if you're a single guy, I highly recommend that you go check Vietnam out. You will not be disappointed. Anyway, this was a really good experience. So we did a lot of training. Taylor was uh, not doing so much of the grappling because he didn't want to get injured before his fight. And I told him the same thing. I said, bro, let's work on your stand-up. 
clinch work instead. So him and I focused a great deal on his stand-up clinch work um, in replacement of him doing all the grappling. He did a bit, but again, we didn't want him to get injured before his fight. So we really, in Vietnam, that is, focused on his stand-up clinch work. And that was great for me to work on it as well. So that was Vietnam. We were here in this place every night for about a week, something like that. And then um, got on another flight, hopped over to Thailand. And that's where the real story begins. All right, quick interlude. I had to throw this in here. So Taylor and I had this running joke the whole time about that movie, Bloodsport. It's if, if you guys have seen it, you'll get this, all right? And if you haven't seen it, I don't know what you're doing. Go and watch it right now. Every martial artist should see it at least once in life. So we were joking that he was more like Frank Dukes, you know, this young come up kid sitting there taking his fight super serious, meditating in his hotel room, like training real hard, super focused. And I was more like, um, I think his name was Ray Jackson. It's the older guy with the beard and the curly hair. And he was just kind of this street brawler, going around hitting on like every Asian chick he saw constantly. And it was funny because uh, there was this one scene where they had just met in the movie. And uh, obviously Ray Jackson was a little bit, supposed to be a little bit older. And he looks at uh, Frank Dukes and he goes, aren't you a little young for full contact? <laughs> and we just thought that was the most hilarious thing, dude. There's another part of the movie where he was, uh, they were sitting on a bus and he was like hitting on this Asian chick. <laughs> And he's like, you want to go out with a real big man? <laughs> and then the chick like totally ignores him. And he goes, too handsome for you, huh, hon? <laughs> dude, we just thought it was so funny because like that was that was me and Taylor the whole time, dude. I was literally just hitting on every Asian chick I saw. And he was just training super hard for the fight. Anyway, back to the, the back to the documentary here. We're going to sit down with Taylor over dinner in Vietnam towards the end of the fight camp for a quick interview before we move on to Thailand. What's going on guys? Well, with Gutter Fighting Secrets, I'm here with my boy Taylor. So we're sitting here in Ho Chi Minh City right now, getting some steak at like this Brazilian steakhouse or whatever, Argentinian steakhouse. And um, it is, what day is it at the fight camp, Taylor? For me, it'd be day seven of the fight camp. All right, so we're looking at day seven of the fight camp. We've got, um, what, two more days here in Vietnam to go, right? Uh, yeah, two more days. Two more days. And then the rest of it's going to be in Thailand. So we're going to move over and do, what, seven more days in Thailand? Uh, seven more days in right. Thailand. We're also so, going to check out uh, Superbond's Jam 2 over there. It's going to be and good. I'll be doing uh, private training with uh, Superbond. He's nice. doing some lessons with him, some private lessons, and also taking his classes and maybe uh, hitting pads with Trainer Gay over there at uh, World Famous Muay Thai Gym. So um, Taylor's fight is on the 12th. And uh, obviously this is coming to it a delay, but Taylor, how are you feeling for your fight, man? We were just talking, um, Taylor and I talked for like an hour last night about just various things, uh, how he's psychologically doing as well as physically now. Bro, you've had a number of just like cuts and injuries and stuff that you're dealing with. We took today off and decided to go and just chill and get some steak and look around, do some bargaining. Oh, cool. That's all right, we got our food coming we in got right our now. food coming. And uh, awesome. guys, look at this lovely freaking bread we got here. You can't wait to dig in. Lovely everything. So Taylor, Taylor can't even actually have any of the bread, but I'll yeah, eat it for I got, him. I got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got to eat bread for me. He's got to drink for me. He's got to. I'm seeing the girls yeah. for him too. So <laughs> yeah, he's got to meet some girls out there for me too. Man, I've, trust me, I've done my part. So, bro, how are you feeling for your fight, man? So I'm actually feeling. Uh, very pumped for this fight. I feel like I've been training very hard. I've been doing everything under the sun to prepare for this fight, doing private training with uh, Jeff Chan, with uh, also Jordan, uh, working on the clinch, working on sweeps, working on defending sweeps, also working on my striking. I've been training as long as eight hours a day, every single day for this camp. And today was really the first day I had to take the whole day off, actually, because I, I need my knee to heal up. It's cut up really bad and the mats are a little bit rough, so we're just gonna give it a day to uh, heal also. And, and I had a family member pass away too a week before the camp and it really hit me hard. And I've been using it as motivation to train and push myself to get to the next level. And she's, and I think going into this fight, I think of uh, 
you know, the Super Saiyans and <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, you know, and they, they have to see a death of their loved ones, they, it just pushes them further to be uh, stronger and better, so, and even, even with uh, my opponent, even if he, he is more skilled than me and he beats me with skill, I, I'm still excited for it because he's going to get me with something I've never seen in my whole life that I can use later in my fight career. So even then, it's uh, it's going to be good. So And I'm very conditioned for this. I've been going pretty hard and sparring with the other fighters, and I've been uh, feeling good. So. And right. Taylor's been working harder than anyone I've ever seen in my life work. Honestly, I'm not just saying that. I've known many martial artists, many fighters in my time, and this guy's training harder than any of them I've ever met, pro or amateur. He deserves to win. You know, we always say the guy who trains harder for the fight deserves to win. I have a good feeling about this. I think Taylor's in a really good spot. And I think by the time the 12th rolls around, today is the first, I think by the time the 12th rolls around, we're going to see a really conditioned fighter step in the ring and take what's his. So, all right, dude, anything, uh, anything more to add, bro? Uh, that's it. Just got to rest up and recover. I'm really enjoying my time in Vietnam. Uh, first day of uh, exploring the city and seeing the temples and um, really reviewing everything I'm learning and letting it solidify, letting it marinate. So I literally had to yell at him last night to take some time off. You know, yeah, the guy yeah. just doesn't want to take a break, but you got to. All right, yes. you have to. So absolutely. All right, man, we're gonna enjoy some good steak here and some good. Uh, what'd you get? The steak and the what? The steak and the uh, crab and lobster soup. So, yeah, so it's very good. No carbs for Taylor, but steak and crab and lobster ain't bad either. Hell yeah. All right, guys, so we're going to be coming with you uh, to you with more updates as we get closer to the fight. We'll let you know how we're doing. All right, so we touched down in Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand, Muay Thai capital of the world. Super exciting. Taylor, obviously, <clears throat> he's got about eight days out from his fight. <clears throat> and so we start training him super hard. Now, his schedule looked like as follows. Hour and a half in the morning of conditioning, an hour of skills in the afternoon, and about two hours of skills and sparring at night. Now, what we ended up deciding to do was hire a dedicated Muay Thai coach, Thai fighter coach from Thailand to train Taylor. We ended up saying, listen, you know, we're at this fight camp. Taylor, I ain't no Muay Thai expert, bro. You got to hire a Thai coach to help you defeat a Thai fighter, bro. That's what we did. Luckily out there, <clears throat> it's amazingly cheap to get your hands on a professional Thai coach. So <clears throat> it was well worth it. I believe the guy's name was Gaylord. And um, they worked for about an hour in the afternoon on things like clinching and advanced striking and stuff like that, stuff that I certainly couldn't help Taylor with and uh, <clears throat> that he wasn't getting in the fight camp either. So he also, in addition to that, sought out and hired some really, really famous Thai fighters to help him train, like Superbon. Um, I'm no Thai uh, Muay Thai aficionado. But I know everyone I told out there that he was training the Super Bond was super excited. And the guy is very famous. So it was a very cool privilege and honor for Taylor to be able to work not only with trainer Gaylord, but also Super Bond and uh, a couple of other fighters as well. So as the fight got closer, Taylor was working real hard. I backed off a little bit. I ended up just going out a whole bunch, having uh, some of these local Thai girls take me out to restaurants and show me around tourist attractions and stuff. I was having a grand old time. Uh, Taylor was training super hard with his coaches, and it worked out really well. As the fight grew closer and closer, I would make sure that Taylor's psychology was all right. Hey, bro, how you feeling? Do you need anything? This and that. I was doing my part as much as, as, much as I could, um, while at the same time really just letting him work with the professionals to get him ready for what he needed to get ready for. Now, here's when things get really interesting. The day before the fight rolls around, 
Taylor and I are talking. The guy is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly confident and ready. I've never seen anyone so ready in my life. So the morning of the fight rolls around 8 a.m. They're knocking on his door. We thought he was going to fight in the afternoon sometime. They said, bro, your fight's at 10 a.m. Get ready. He's like, what, what, what? Like, rolls out, gets in the back of some freaking Thai pickup truck, and they take him over to this gym. Now, again, we thought Taylor was going to be fighting in a stadium. Turns out it's like some like smoker fight at a Muay Thai gym in the middle of Thailand somewhere. Backcountry place with chickens running around. Anyway, it was it was interesting. Um, you know, we walk in, we see six year olds fighting, and then we see like ten year olds fighting, and then we see teenagers fighting, and then we see adults fighting, and um, it was super interesting. Now Taylor was super calm out there, literally out front of the gym, uh, sipping an iced latte, and just we were joking, we were hanging out. Is it just me, or is that does that dude with the kofia look like the dude from Bloodsport? Dude, <laughs> he was so chill. Like, I've never seen him so relaxed in my life because he knew he put in so much work. He said to me, Will, you know, this is now I can just enjoy it. Um, now I get to fight. Now I get to destroy this guy. I'm so ready. And we were just joking and laughing. Now, here's when it really starts to fall apart. Um, apparently, Taylor's opponent came and saw Taylor and I standing outside laughing and he was you know like i said sipping this freaking ice mocha latte casually freaking sipping and a uh, he looked at taylor <laughs> he saw the sides boom and he said fuck this i'm out and the coward just left he just left so we're pretty pissed off right now uh taylor how do you feel man it's hard to control the rage man yeah i am fucking mad this guy's a real bitch, whoever it was that yeah, yeah, closed it out. So. All right, man. Well, don't worry, man. We're going to make it happen, all right? So it was the time when uh, Taylor was supposed to do the pictures, you know, like this, standing next to the guy. And Taylor's uh, coach came up and said, dude, the fight's off. Your guy left. Your opponent left. He saw you. He got scared. He left. Uh, it was incredibly disappointing. So I went to work immediately. I was talking with the trainer. I was saying, listen, like we got to find him an opponent. The trainer was saying, yeah, I'm trying to find him an opponent. Now we need time, we need time, we need time. Um, we ended up hanging around the gym for another hour or so trying to find another opponent for Taylor and nobody would fight him. Literally there was like tie fighters. <laughs> there were tie fighters everywhere, but no one would fight Taylor. No one wanted to take that fight. Taylor's a big guy. Ties are small people. Um, he also just had this aura of confidence about him. So we were incredibly disappointed. Um, now, the powers that be, I ended up talking to them. I ended up trying to negotiate something, and um, everything kept falling through, falling through. And they said, listen, we're going to get you a fight in the next three days. Stay in Thailand for three days. So I canceled. I was going to go to Taiwan. Things out. I got to change a bunch of reservations, but we're going to see. Maybe stick around until Wednesday and... Make this fight happen. I'm going to reach out to some of my contacts that I have. And um, then I was going to meet Taylor in Japan afterwards. I literally called up my flight. I called up my hotel. I canceled it. I extended the hotel that we were staying at. And I said, fuck it, Taylor, bro. Like, I'm here for you, man. I'm your corner, bro. Like, anything you need. Of course, I'm going to stay in Thailand with you and, like, try to find this fight. So that night, we ended up <laughs> going out for a nice steak dinner. We actually ended up celebrating because it did work out. Now, this technically counts as a win for Taylor. A win by forfeiture, they call it. So, technically speaking, he just won his first professional Muay Thai fight, and it goes on his record. Uh, he actually has the documentation. It's in Thai, but we got it translated also to English. So, uh, now Taylor can fight professionally. He can join the pro fight team. It does count as a win on his record. Um, now, if there's an upside to this, it is that. We ended up staying in Thailand for three more days. Little shorts. Wait, Will, what's that? The the man that you're going to fight? Yeah. He needs the little kid shorts, the little size. Oh, the little girl the shorts? The little girl shorts. He's going to need like the six-year-old girl shorts. I mean, the little girl was fighting pretty well. I, I think My the opponent, little girl uh, is a little tougher than this 
freaking uh, well, look over kind, here kind yet. Of a pussy, so yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I think she could. Uh, I think she could put up more of a fight than your freaking opponent, bro. You know, I bet you're right. Uh, forget about it. And I was on the phone, and the guys were texting Taylor back and forth. The promoter was texting us. Oh, I can get you a fight in Phuket. Now, Phuket's like an hour and away by plane. I can get you a fight in Phuket tonight. We were sitting in Bangkok at like three in the afternoon saying, that's not going to work, bro. So we kept trying, kept trying, kept trying. And we couldn't get him a fight. I mean, it was just impossible. So we ended up partying for three days in Bangkok and then flying out to Japan and meeting my buddy Rich in Japan. Now, Rich had set up a really amazing week for us. Rich, I met Rich in Bill Wolf's Battle School in 2017. It's funny because in 2017, Taylor started training Muay Thai. I started training uh, MMA and Rich started training in Aikido. Rich is now a black belt in Aikido instructing in Japan. Um, I'm obviously now getting, you know, training up for uh, my first amateur MMA fight. I'm on an amateur fight team now. And Taylor obviously just, you know, entered into the world of professional Muay Thai as well. So it's funny how that works out. And uh, we were able to do a week of training in Japan with really amazing um, ninjutsu, like from the lineage of ninja samurai uh, sword fighting training from the lineage of samurai the guy was from the lineage of samurai um aikido obviously at rich's dojo really amazing stuff we got an authentic ninja massage with sake and he, like fixed a bunch of our injuries it was really 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 amazing uh so those three days of partying in bangkok followed by a week of uh you know japanese martial arts training in japan amazing amazing time it actually ended up not being bad, working out in everybody's favor, kind of. Um, Taylor and I incessantly made fun of the guy who wouldn't fight Taylor. Uh, we ended up finding out who it was. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to put it out there on this channel or anything like that. You know, out of respect, right? But we ended up, you know, really making fun of the guy hard to ourselves. And um, that was that. So here I am. I'm back stateside now. And it was an amazing, amazing trip. Ended up being over there for over a month. And um, fuck, Korea, Vietnam, Thailand, Japan, like warrior training, warrior training. It was great. Not to mention the fact that I met a lot of really nice people over there. Um, so that's it, guys. That's the story of uh, Bloodsport 2023. It wasn't, it didn't go as we expected. Honestly, things kept changing again and again and again and again. But hey, that's fighting in Thailand for you. You got to roll with the punches, so to speak, no pun intended. And you got to just take it as it comes. Um, I really appreciate you guys always supporting the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, share, obviously, all of that stuff. Remember, gutterfightingsecrets.com if you want to learn some really good street fighting stuff. All of our um, educational videos are all over there well worth your time until next time guys please remember that you are your first and last line of defense and i'll see you in the next video cheers mother flowers